Well, I think it's dangerous to just say that our office is dismissing too many cases or not accepting enough cases for prosecution. Because without looking at the specific case, you can't know what the reasons for those actions were. And what you want in a district attorney is someone whose judgment that you can trust, someone who looks at each case and decides what, decides what is appropriate for each case, not to just say that there's a great number of dismissals and we need to cut down on those. There may be perfectly good reasons for those dismissals. The reasons could be that there wasn't enough evidence, and we're bound by our ethics code to not pursue cases where there's not enough evidence to proceed. So I think it's dangerous to just look at numbers of cases that are being dismissed instead of looking at the specifics. But as a district attorney, I would encourage my assistant district attorneys to use their good judgment, and if there are tough judgment calls, to come to the elected DA to ask those questions and to make those decisions on a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. Mr. Van Buren? All I can compare it to is I look where I've worked in Caldwell County. I've looked where I worked in Rowan County. In Rowan County, our dismissal rate is 7%. We must be doing something different. Is our law enforcement better? Are our attorneys better? In Rowan County, we accept between 75 and 85 percent of the felony cases submitted to law enforcement for felony prosecution. Again, is our law enforcement better? Are our attorneys better? There's something wrong. Same in Caldwell County. I would average in Caldwell County, a county half the size of Iredell County, maybe one rejection of a felony case submitted by law enforcement a month. There were two attorneys that did superior court in Caldwell County, myself and Nancy Lee, and her average was the same. When you play that out, you can see that Caldwell County had a significant high rate of acceptance for felony prosecution. This has to change. If you talk to law enforcement officers, their morale is low. They're low because they think this district attorney's office doesn't care about their cases. It's got to change. These numbers, 35% is too low. That means 65 percent of victims out there are not doing justice. Thank you. Mr. Martin. Thank you. There will be many changes that result as or come about as a result of the split of this district that's been enacted by the legislature effective in January of next year. It has, however, been a central theme of Mr. Van Buren's campaign to dump jump on the bandwagon of change. It almost appears that Mr. Van Buren's not running against me. He doesn't have my experience. He doesn't have my proven record of success in the courtroom. So he's running against my boss in our office. It's somewhat akin to Hillary and Obama running against President Bush instead of against nominee McCain. Mr. Van Buren talks about our failed administration, as he calls it, and he likes to throw around a few statistics that he has cherry-picked. I will tell you that I've spoken to our three chiefs of police, our two sheriffs, our two clerks, various judges and probation officers, and to a person, they disagree with Mr. Van Buren's conclusion that this is a failed administration Ms. Kirkman and I work in at this time. And as for his statistics, they have been cherry-picked. There are areas in which we lead the state. I'm not going to discuss those in detail with you tonight for one reason. Justice cannot be reduced to a number. Right and wrong cannot be quantified. It is dangerous to do so. Justice is decided on a case-by-case -case basis. If your sons and daughters are accused of something, the fact of the matter is we're not perfect. Law enforcement officers are not perfect. Sometimes people are not guilty. You do not want a prosecutor who postures publicly based on statistics and appearances. That leads us down the dark road that Mr. Nifong went down when he was more worried more about what things looked like than what was right and wrong. 